Hello, I'm glad you could join us today for Midweek Encouragement. This is January 27, 2021. We're going to be looking at the book of Daniel and see that God is in control. We can take heart because God is in control no matter what is happening. Things can happen that would cause us to despair, cause us to be discouraged, cause us to even be depressed, especially in the life of a nation. But in Daniel chapter 8, we see that Daniel also had these type of reactions when he saw some prophetic things that was revealed to him and and uh, it was troubling. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 27, you could pause right here and get your Bible. I could put these verses up on the screen for you and that would be helpful, but I would like for you to look at your own Bible and to mark these places. Look these verses up and check me out. Don't, don't just take my word for it. But in Daniel chapter 8, verse 27, it says, And I, Daniel, fainted, he fainted, and was sick for days. Afterward I rose and went about the king's business. I was astonished by the vision, but no one understood it. Daniel gave words of prophecy. And even he didn't understand everything that he saw. Sometimes it took divine intervention. An angel would have to reveal it to him. And I would like for us to pause right now and pray that God would help us to understand our times and understand what the Bible has to say about God's plan for now and the future. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you reveal to us your plan. And Father, I thank you that you show us that you are in control no matter what. And you can give us comfort. You can give us peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In Daniel chapter 4, I would like for us to see a certain truth that is mentioned three times. If God says it once, that's enough. But if he says it three times, we ought to uh, put it out on the marquee. We ought to mark it down that this is very important. In Daniel chapter 4, we see that Daniel was to interpret a dream from Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream about a tree that was cut down, and that tree was him. And the reason that his empire ended for a season was God wanted to show him that he ruled in the kingdom of men. And, and God was in control. Nebuchadnezzar thought he was in control, but God was in control. In Daniel chapter 4, verse 17, it says, This decision is by the decree of the watchers, and the sentence by the word of the holy ones, in order that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it, to whomever he will, and sets over it the lowest of men. You know, that doesn't say much for those that rule in the affairs of men, those with governmental authority. It says that they are the lowest of men. Sometimes they, they prove it out by some of the scandals that go on. But this decision was handed through the watchers. The watchers probably were a special class of angel, those that were given to uh, certain territorial jurisdictions, and then the holy ones would have been uh, perhaps uh, another class of angels, may have been the same ones, but it was a decree of the watchers and a sentence by the word of the holy ones. Now, God doesn't have to use a divine counsel, but it appears that He does. We see it in the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. But it says that it was a decree. It was a sentence that was passed in order that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. You know, we do our part as citizens to vote, to lawfully influence our legislatures, and to at least try to fulfill our obligation as citizens. We're told on paper that we the people have a part in the government. Sometimes I wonder. However, we see that God says He rules in the kingdom 
of men. He gives it to whomever he will and sets over it the lowest of men. I've heard some folks uh, say, well, uh, God's going to do what he's going to do and therefore we don't have to do a thing. Well, we do. We have our responsibility. I've also heard some say, well, yeah, you vote, but God can do ever what he, he wants to do. Well, that really has borne truth here recently. However, uh, let's never forget that God rules in the kingdoms of men. He has the ultimate uh, authority in deciding what's going to happen, what empire is going to be raised up, and what empire is going to be brought down. So in Daniel 4.17, we see the first instance of God declaring that He rules in the kingdom of men. And Nebuchadnezzar had this dream. Daniel was going to interpret it in, in verse 25 of chapter 4. He gives the interpretation, and we see that same truth given again. It says, They shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. So Daniel gives the interpretation of the dream to Nebuchadnezzar, tells him what's going to happen and says, break off your sins. Maybe this will uh, not happen. But as we're going to see in verse 29, that Nebuchadnezzar is lifted up in pride and he sees Babylon and he attributes it all to himself and his glory that these things were done, forgetting that God rules in the kingdom of men. What happens to Nebuchadnezzar is what we call boanthropy. Boanthropy is where someone thinks they're an ox and they eat grass like an ox. And it was said that his hair would grow like long and kind of matted together like eagle's feathers and it actually happened. And it said it happened for an interval set till seven times shall pass over you. Well, usually that's a year. Some have said, well, it's just an interval of time. It could have been seven days, seven months. But usually it's a year, and God can do that. He can take an empire down for seven years and restore somebody to that power again. So the same truth is reiterated where the event actually happens in verse 29 of Daniel chapter 4. And it says, at the end of the 12 months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon, the king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? You see, Nebuchadnezzar got it all wrong. He thought it was all about him, but God wanted him to know it was about God. It was about God himself. Verse 31, While the word was still in the king's mouth, Hmm, what timing. A voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. You know, God can get our attention. He knows your name. He knows your address. The kingdom has departed from you. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen. And seven times shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever He chooses. So God can give world power to anyone He chooses. We see that in the book of Daniel. We see it in the first dream of Nebuchadnezzar where he has a dream about a golden statue. None of his wise men could interpret it or even give him the dream. He was kind of wise. He said... Uh, you not only have to interpret the dream, you have to tell me the dream. And the wise men balked at that. They said, who can do this? And Nebuchadnezzar threatened them with, with execution if no one did it. And Daniel heard about this. And Daniel not only interpreted the dream, he told him the dream. And the dream was about a statue that was uh, pictured successive world empower, empires, starting with Babylon, the head of gold, the chest and arms of silver were the Medes and Persians, 
Persians. And then the bronze belly and thighs were, that was the kingdom of Greece. And then it, it gave way to the legs of iron, which was Rome. And then the future kingdom, which was the feet and the toes that were partly clay, partly iron, that was mixed, that was brittle, which is the final world empire, the revived Roman Empire. And that kingdom will be superseded by the kingdom that shall never end, Christ's kingdom, that will be inaugurated at Christ's second coming. So God is in control of these world empires. When they start, when they end, and one day every kingdom of man will end and the everlasting kingdom of Christ will be ushered in. And so when we see things happen, when we see world events happen that will make us have the same reaction that Daniel had, that would cause depression, that would cause us to be sick, may even cause us to faint, um, we should go to the Scriptures and realize that God is in control. He's in control of world events. And if He allows something to happen as unjust as it might be, because we live in a sinful world. We live with the consequences of our own sin and the, the sin of others. But God is bringing things to a point of conclusion. He has a plan. His plan is eternal. His plan is everlasting. His plan is long term. Many times we want short term answers. We want short term relief. We want comfort. We want to stay where we we have the things that we enjoy. But sometimes we have to face hard times. God has to get us to the best place, which sometimes is going through difficult circumstances that He allows for our good and for His glory. So God controls world events. He allows things to happen. He brings to pass certain things. And I'd like to end with uh, that everlasting kingdom. And it starts off with the pompous words of the Antichrist, the first beast that we see in the book of Revelation that we've been studying about. But in Daniel chapter 7, verses 11 through 14, it says, I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. Now it says horn, that's symbolic of this world ruler. Horn is symbolic of power. And he was speaking pompous words, something like Nebuchadnezzar was speaking that God had to deal with. He says, I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. This happens at the return of Christ we see in the book of Revelation at the end of the book. Verse 12, as for the rest of the beast, these are the world empires, they're pictured as beast. Uh, some have continued in some form, maybe not in their ultimate power, but they continue to exist. They had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. We still see Persia, uh, that area where Babylon ruled. We still see Rome, that area where Rome ruled. We still see uh, Greece, where that empire ruled. They don't have their power or dominion, but they're still around. And it starts off in verse 13. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. We see that in the book of Revelation. Jesus coming back with the clouds. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought Him near before Him. The Ancient of Days would be God the Father that brought Jesus before Him. Verse 14, Then to Him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve Him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. So all of these world empires will eventually come to an end. And Jesus' empire 
will last forever. The question is, are you part of his kingdom? And the way that the only way that you can answer affirmative that you are part of his kingdom is that you receive him as Lord and Savior. You see, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's every one of us who've walked this earth except Jesus Christ. The reason that he can die for our sins, he was sinless. He was the God man. He did not inherit a sin nature. He did not choose to sin. We're sinners by nature and by choice. We all need salvation through Jesus Christ. We're all on the same plane when it comes to being guilty. All we have to be guilty of is, is one sin. We're guilty of all. We're, we're sinners if we commit one sin. Most of us do far more than that. Salvation is by grace through faith. It's not of works, lest any man should boast, the Bible tells us. So salvation is a free gift. For the wages of sin is death. The payment that we get for sin is death. We're all going to die physically unless Jesus comes back first. And the Bible also speaks of a second death in the book of Revelation, which is hell. It's, it's the lake of fire. And it's eternal. The Bible is clear about that. The only way that we can escape that judgment is allowing Jesus to take our judgment upon himself, which he did on the cross. But we have to receive him by faith. We have to receive that gift. We have to ask forgiveness, asking to come into our life and save us. If you want to be part of that everlasting kingdom, pray a prayer like this. Father, I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Come into my life and save me. I want to be part of your forever kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Bible says that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God does not lie. He cannot lie. And if, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can be saved. You can know that heaven is your eternal home. And this kingdom will be set up on earth. Christ is going to come back. We see that literally in the book of Revelation. We see it promised in the book of Daniel. In Hebrews 13, 14, it says, for, for, for here we don't have an enduring city, but we seek the one which is to come. And that is our permanent home. We will have trouble and trials in this earth. But Jesus said, don't be discouraged. I have overcome the world. We're to have courage. We're to have faith. We're to trust in the Lord. No matter what happens, no matter what troubles we may be facing now or in the future, God has promised to provide for our needs. He's promised that we can have perfect peace if we will pray and if we will place our heart, our mind, and our hope in him i hope you're having a good week i i pray that you do and uh we hope that uh things will be good uh for you the rest of the week i'm going to pray as we we close uh heavenly father i thank you for your many blessings thank you for those that have tuned in tonight and lord or this evening i pray that you would just bless them encourage their hearts Lord, I pray for our nation. I pray for our leaders. I pray that you would lead them in the right way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a good week.